Welcome to 50 Ways to Succeed at Work, where you hear stuff about ways to succeed even the most well-intentioned colleagues, advisors, careers officers and HR departments may never get around to mentioning. Episode 8. Joker. Using your brilliant sense of humour at work. Hi, Steph. Have you uh, got a moment? Sure. What's up, Doc? Look, Steph, I want to talk to you about your joking habit. You mean my Halloween costume? Don't be cute, Steph. You know what I mean. Okay, so what's wrong with my jokes? There's nothing wrong with your jokes, Steph. Some of them are even funny. It's when and how often you share them. Look, let's meet this afternoon and talk about it. I'll see you in my office, let's say, about three o'clock. Right. I'll be there, joke-free. Thanks for coming, Steph. You know, in some ways, I admire your ability to find humour in everything. You're relentless. How people dress, when they arrive late, the latest management update, my team leader's weekly huddle, even your co-workers' mistakes get an airing. It seems nothing sacred. But most people like my jokes, especially when their jobs are so boring. You assume absolutely everybody loves your wit, don't you? Well, if not, why do so many of them join in? That may be true, but your jokes create a lot of social pressure for others to play along. Frankly, your great humour can be and often is distracting stuff, and people are sometimes upset at being a target for your wit. Let me say, Steph, you're not on a comedy writing team, nor do we employ you to write jokes. If we needed them, you would be the first we'd turn to. Thanks. I'll be straight up with you, Steph. While many of your jokes are funny, it's damaging to the group's performance. It's great to have joke-filled meetings, but the sheer frequency is getting on many people's nerves. For example, not all your joking is clean. To be blunt, rather too much is crude, even sexist. Do you realise these kinds of jokes actually reduce your own perceived competence? A couple of months later, Steph announces that he's leaving. When asked about his plans, hardly anyone is surprised when he reveals, I'm going to try stand-up comedy for a living. Now let's connect Steph's story and his humour to you and your work. For example, people tend to have three questions about using humour at work. What sort of humour should I avoid at work? Can humour help me be a success at work? And how does humour at work make a worthwhile difference? So what sort of humour should you avoid at work? Well, if you keep highlighting people's differences, that can prove troublesome. For example, it's probably good tactics to steer clear of jokes about religion, stereotypes and other inappropriate workplace topics. In particular, avoid using humour to mock and discredit your co-workers your clients or the organisation. Similarly, be wary of jokes on topics and events currently in the headlines or trending on social media. Some co-workers may feel that it's too soon to laugh about them. But be especially careful about joking when others are in crisis mode. Your team members or co-workers may react when it's insensitive to their situation. A useful reminder to yourself is that you don't know for sure what might be troubling other people. What may seem hilarious and worth a jokey response could be a painful experience for someone else. Finally, as all comedians know, it pays to stay aware of your audience. If unsure how to respond, choose the side of kindness and building trust. The next question that worries people is, can humour help me be a success at work? Numerous studies show that people who share a healthy, positive sense of humour tend to be more likeable and are viewed as being more trustworthy. They also confirm that humour can be the key to success. For example, one survey found that 91% of executives believe a sense of humour is essential for career advancement. Most people, well 84%, feel able to do a better job if they've had a good sense of humour at work. Two of the most desirable traits for those in senior positions are a strong work ethic and guess what? A good sense of humour. People who use humour tend to be more approachable than those missing the humour gene. The more approachable you are, the more honest and open people will be around you. That can give you a definite career edge. If your humour helps create a more jovial atmosphere, you'll have more passion for what you do. Your work ethic will increase and your enthusiasm is likely to be contagious. It's a win-win for you and your employer. Too much joking, though, can become a burden. Having a clown constantly around at work 
can derail everything and waste everybody's time. And the final question that people worry about is how does humour at work make a worthwhile difference? When you use humour well, people will enjoy working with you. Seeing the funny side of things can help. When you use humour well, people will enjoy working with you. Seeing the funny side of things can help you and others achieve a mind shift, which may also be a potent stress buster. Humour has many benefits at work. Perhaps its most worthwhile contribution is humanising it. It allows colleagues to come together. For example, employees and managers can realise that they have lots in common. It puts others at ease and is a powerful way to break through tension. For example, people who laugh when facing a conflict tend to shift from convergent thinking, where they only see one solution, to divergent thinking, where multiple ideas are concerned. So what action do I suggest you might take? Well, first of all, assess whether your ever-so-funny joke might have serious side effects. Secondly, avoid tricky subjects like death, physical disability, racial or sexual inequalities. And thirdly, if in doubt, leave it out. Pause until you are sure how your sense of humour will land. And my takeaway from this? Humour at work is good and healthy. Ensure that yours comes at the right time, without disrespecting or damaging others. You've been listening to an episode of Andrew's 50 Ways to Succeed at Work. For more episodes, subscribe free to my regular weekly podcasts. You can catch up on past ones at the 50 wayssite where you can also become a Foundation member with access to e-learning units, transcripts, further reading links and the forum where you can ask questions, share problems and join a growing community of people who seriously want to succeed at work. Now there's a new book and an audio version called, you guessed it, 50 Ways to Succeed at Work. Buy it at Amazon or the 50ways.site. Unmissable. Thanks for listening and bye for now until next week.